Because Mary Wells said you did try. Okay. But because she had mad respect for Claudette. Now, not all the hoes had mad respect for the Claudette. We know Diana did. <laughs> bugs hello there bellas if you have not already done so please remember to like share that means tell a friend and or share to twitter facebook whatever subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com for these super fly shades in black and or beige okay yeah love these these are too cool for me and this chuggy lip and if you are not already a part of this book club please hit the patreon link below and door the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before you digging them mm. Strike a pose. And you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Smokey the Robinson. West Grand Boulevard was the name of the street. Barry had bought a routine B-flat two-story house on the same strip as a funeral home and beauty shop. We were wedged in between. He and Ray, that would be the sugar He and Ray and their newborn son, Carrie, moved upstairs. Downstairs became headquarters. Kitchen became the control room. Garage became the studio where we'd cut way over there and shop around. The living room was bookkeeping. The dining room sells. Barry stuck a funky sign in the front window. Hitsville, USA. And we were in business. The house was the womb for an astounding number of artists' birth. That's where we were nursed, where we grew and fought and loved. <laughs> uh -huh. Played and provoked and produced and sang an array of songs that would enter into the lives and souls of millions of people all over the world. I don't know if I ever took creative writing in college, but for him to be able to express himself this way and never finished college is mind-boggling to me. At the time, we were just local kids trying to get over. And believe me, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for me in 1962 because that long Southern tour, the first Motortown Review was still on and I was still out recovering from the Asian flu. Claudette was still far away. You sound so far away, Mary, I said, wiping the sleep from my eyes. I am. I'm calling from Atlanta. It was a bitter cold mid-November midnight in Detroit, and I wondered why Mary Wells was calling me. Not that I wasn't glad. I bet you were, because Mary Wells said you did try, okay? But because she had mad respect for Claudette. Now, not all the hoes had mad respect for the Claudette. We know Diana did. Found this soulful sounding chick, Barry had told me a year earlier, who I want you to work with. Mary became my pet project. Uh -huh. Mary had told me a year earlier who I want you to work with. Mary became my pet project, shy and eager to please the producer. She'd done a wonderful job on her first recording, Bye Bye Baby. I liked writing for her voice, like experimenting with her sound. In fact, I took my love for Harry Belafonte's Calypso and gave an island flavor, Bongo Bop, to the one who really loves you. It hit big. So did You Beat Me to the Punch and Two Lovers. Later, I wrote My Guy, her biggest hit of all. Mm-hmm. Now, Mary, I, I keep writing your hits, girl. It's time to pay the pipe. What happened, Mary? Smoke the guys would kill me if they knew I was calling you. Claudette would be even angrier. I don't understand, Mary. I don't either, Smoke. 
I don't know why she doesn't tell you. Tell me what? Look, Smoke, I shouldn't be saying this, but I love Claudette. I really do. She's my roommate and my friend and dot, dot, dot. Tell me, Mary, for God's sake, tell me. Claudette's pregnant. My heart started hammering. My throat went dry. Is she all right was all I could ask. No, she's not all right. That's why I'm calling you. She's bleeding. Bleeding something awful. And the guys in the group, well, they're not even helping carry her bags. Only James Jamerson, the bass player. He's the only gentleman. I don't think it's right, Smoke. And it's something you needed to know. Is Claudette there? Can I talk to her? I'm calling from a payphone. She's up in the room. Mary gave me the number and frantic with fear, I called Claudette. Baby, I just talked to Mary and she shouldn't have told you, Smokey. I wanted to surprise you, not worry you. I'm surprised, but I'm worried as hell. I want you home right now. And what about this bleeding? It stopped. I went to the doctor today and he stopped the bleeding. He said I was fine. Thank God. That's even more reason to come home to make sure things stay fine. It wouldn't be fair to the guys. Christmas is coming up and they need the money. You need to be home. We're having a baby and I want you here with me. Look, Smokey, Pete's in the army and you're in the sick bed. That leaves just me, Ronnie and Bobby. The fans won't accept just two miracles. It won't be right. It's not right for you in your condition to be out on the road. Everything will turn out fine, honey. Believe me, y'all know everything didn't turn out fine. You know that lady lost her baby when she came home. She thought everything was okay, but she ended up going into the hospital and losing her baby. I thought they only had like um, one or two miscarriages, okay? But in reality, I read somewhere, I think it was Wikipedia, that they had um, seven Poor Miss Claudette. Oh, my God, Miss Claudette. Oh, and then, then you're cheating all over, Smokey. You're a dirty mother, hunchy. I'm telling you, the children that they did have were indeed miracles. Uh, the daughter that they had is Miss Claudette's twin. I follow her on Instagram. I think her name is Indigo Blue, B-L-O-O. -O. Beautiful, beautiful. And her daughter is even more beautiful. Claudette's water broke at the hospital. They said it was too late. The baby was gone. We were devastated. Back to the Diana. Mm -hmm. Back to the Diana. Now let's yeah. talk right quick about why Smokey the Robinson is coming out now with this tea about him and Diana. First thing is, why would you spread the word that you hunched your best friend's love thing why would you do that that's not something you are proud of that's not something that all three of the parties is proud of you know what i'm saying okay you got best friends and the men the two best friend men had the same woman number two okay let's be let's be real this 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 right here is the era of clout okay you can't uh uh get to the top working your way to the top okay you have to drag a mother hunter down to the gutter. It's like you got to step on the back of somebody in order to get above them. Like the crabs in the burrow. Now we don't live in that time where, you know, you just have to be good. No. We live in a time where you take somebody good, you, you reach for the stars, you grab somebody good, and you drag them down. So anyway, getting to the point I'm trying to make, right? So we know that Donna Ross just won a Grammy years after her prime i mean years that never happens okay and it would be the boss ross to do I it i think she yeah. did a lifetime achievement award or something like that but donna ross just won a grammy for thank you the album she just released like i want to say either earlier this year or last year so why wouldn't Smokey seize the day okay because that's what he does seize the day and grab hold of Donna Ross's shine and say, yeah, I fucked her back in the day. Yeah, I was trying to keep it quiet because I was married at the time. So, yeah, let's talk about she it. She didn't want a Grammy. I got gasms coming out. Maybe I can grab hold of her. Star. And, you know, and maybe I can hang up there with her in the starlight. 
Okay. I don't know if his album is doing as well as um Donna Ross's. I don't know, but that that's amazing to me. That proves that Donna Ross is the boss for you for saying that she's, you know, a, a industry hoe. Whatever it is you got to say. However it is you say it. She just got another Grammy in her late 70s or 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 early 80s. I don't know. But what other lady you know can do that? None. I loved Donna Ross. I still do. She was my neighborhood buddy and she depended on me. She knew I'd be real with her. And so was Barry. He made the girls finish high school before he signed them. Even before that, Diane, never one to be denied, worked as a secretary at the Hitsville office just to be close to the action. I see you, Smokey. You don't want to talk about how Diane was flirting with the Barry Gordy. He's such a gentleman. I love him. Diane and I had been close for years. I admired her spunk and her smarts. In fact, when she needed money for cosmetology school, I loaned it to her. I applauded her ambition. I also helped her through her driving test. We celebrated when she got her license and we celebrated when she graduated Cast Tech. She was a heady mixture of sweetness and aggression. She had drive, that much was clear, and she had charm. In the beginning, though, none of us knew the enormous range of her talent. In 1962, after Barbara Martin had left the group now known as the Supremes, I recorded some songs on them. Your heart belongs to me who's loving you. But nothing happened. Is anything ever going to happen, Smoke? Diane would ask. Seeing how Mary Wells and the Miracles were getting hits and she wasn't. Eventually, talent wins out, I tell her. Problem is, you never know when. I pleaded for patience. You're really enjoying Diane's company, Claudette said to me one day. Miss Claudette knew. I see you over there with that Diana. You know she hunting a lot of the other the producers around there. You could be one. What does that mean? You tell me. She's my friend. People say she more. People say all kinds of shiz. People love the gossip. Well, it's getting back to me. If the gossip's upsetting you, it's upsetting me. A lot. Claudette said painly and honestly, I thought about it. The last thing in the world I wanted to do was upset Claudette. Would it make you feel better if I didn't see Diane so much? It would. Then I cooled it. And I did. I like Diane. I like her. I like her gumption. I'm going to say it again. Fuck you. If you don't like this woman's tenacity. Okay, and if her tenacity is in her underwear, then so be it. Marvin Gaye had lousy feet, didn't know that. He walked gingerly, trying to avoid aggravating his bunions and corns. I'm turned off. I don't care how much healing his sex gives you. I don't know if I can look down at a man's feet and be like, okay. Now, you know who got bad feet? Athletes. Woo, them motherfuckers is terrible. And uh, ballet dancers. The way you creep around here. I told him one day, you remind me of an old man. I'm calling you dad. In the early days, dad, like Diane, liked to hang around looking for a spot. An opening and opportunity. He was a versatile musician, a first-rate drummer. That's how I happened to ask him to do a gig with us at the Rockland Palace in New York. He jumped at the chance. On the way, Dad got to talking. He spoke like he walked so softly. You could barely hear him, child, but he's supposed to be at the gig talking about Marvy Poo, right? Taco Meat Marvin, you know, because the hair on his chest is so beady. Taco Meat Marvin's supposed to be playing the drums for the Miracle Child. He right here looking for the gangster. I didn't know that that was what you called reefer. That's what the Smokey said. I didn't know that. Where do it say it? He around here looking for the gangster. I didn't know that. Marvin Gaye, he all cool. I was out looking for the gangster. You know, well, call that. You talking. Get your ass back there and play the drums for the miracle. Dad had a plan for everything. See, he said, when I get out there, don't look for me to be singing rock and roll. What are you going to be singing, Dad? Standards, love songs, slow ballads like Sinatra. I'm going to be the black Sinatra. Tonight, I said, you're going to be the black drummer for the miracles. And we're looking for you to kick ass. 
Ronnie White's brother, Gerald, had a friend, said he was real musical, called him amazing, bugged Ronnie about him until Ronnie heard him, bugged me until I heard him, bugged Barry until Barry heard him. Finally, we all heard him. We dug him and started calling him Baby Ray because he was like a little Ray Charles. He was a blind whiz kid named Steveland Morse, but Barry, after signing him and finding him tutors, called him Little Stevie Wonder. Oh, 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 oh,